Okay, well, let us uh, continue with what God has given us on this day. We pray that uh, you have had a very fruitful day. Uh, like so many, it's been so busy all day long. And uh, when you get up at the crack of dawn, and so sometimes you leave home when it's dark and you come home when it's dark. And uh, that's just kind of the season of life that uh, many of us find ourselves in. So uh, we're grateful to have something to do when we praise God for that. Uh, if you have a prayer request, we ask that you would go ahead and start posting now. As um, we do take it very, very seriously that the effective uh, and uh, effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We, we really do. Effective, effectual, we, we really take it very seriously. Many of us are living and existing today because of the prayers of people that came before us. Uh, a mama, a daddy, a brother, a sister, a cousin. And so we just take it very seriously and we count it a very uh, rare privilege to be able to go to God and that he would actually hear us. Um, we certainly have a, a couple of announcements that we wanted to give you before our speaker comes uh, up this evening. Um, got a call from uh, our sister uh, congregation uh, uh, and fellow uh, minister of the gospel, Brother Frazier, uh, at the powerful and mighty Cashmere Gardens Church of Christ that uh, is not doing well. He's uh, uh, dealing with some COVID challenges. And so we just ask that you'd keep uh, Brother Frazier and his wife and uh, their children and the entire congregation in your, in your prayers. Uh, they're having a um, end of the year celebration on this coming Sunday the 18th and they've invited us to come over after we conclude ours and uh, I'm going to um, be on program to say something to encourage the church as, uh, uh, as we all have uh, battled and um, uh, trailblazed through um, COVID-19. And so Brother Frazier obviously was scheduled to be there, but uh, will not uh, uh, on this week. So we just ask that you'd keep him in your prayers. And if you're looking for something fruitful to do, oh, I don't know, about 1215 to about uh, 130 or so on this uh, Sunday, please make your way over uh, to, uh, to Calvocate and uh, support uh, our, our dear brother and my dear friend in the gospel, uh, Brother Frazier and uh, the great brothers and sisters over there. So we just wanted to give you that. Tonight, um, uh, Brother uh, Randy Alfred will come once again and uh, been excited about listening to what God has uh, placed in him. I, I, I really do see it almost like a pregnancy in the sense that God has impregnated uh, him and he's put something inside of him. Now it's time for him to deliver. He's at the nine month point. So it's time for him to deliver this, I don't know, nine pound, uh, two ounce baby boy or girl. So it's his time to deliver. And so we really look forward to that. He's talking about effective leadership and tonight he'll be focusing on the area of responsibilities of, of leaders and and I'm reminded of a very uh, close case that I saw in uh, my uh, mother's hometown of Corsicana uh, if you know what that is you can say amen and put that in your chat box but uh, that someone who was in a leadership position there a CFO of uh, of the Collins Street Bakery. Boy, I've gone there so many times as a kid and as an adult, it's just absolutely crazy. So he was convicted of uh, pillaging, stealing money. And boy, I tell you, it really hurt the company in that several people had to be laid off. My point is the actions of a leader do impact the people below him. So because of his um, you know, stealing of millions of dollars, uh, several people lost their job. So it's incumbent upon any political leader, uh, religious church leader, uh, community leader, 
uh, parent, because parents are leaders, uh, educational leader, that boy, what you do at that school as a principal does matter. If you're not taking care of business at your school, your students will suffer and they won't have the educational opportunities that they should have because of your derelict uh, duties. And so it's just uh, important that uh, all of us understand, irrespective to where God has placed you within a family, in a community, in a church, at a law firm in downtown Houston, that boy, you have an obligation to, to do what is right and do um, what is best and to be good at it, to be competent at it, because people are counting on you. And when you fail, a company can fail. A person may not be able to keep their kid in college because they're depending on that job to pay tuition. So what we do is important, and it does have consequences. So we just ask that uh, uh, you would give Brother Randy your undivided attention uh, for uh, tonight and then for his... Uh, remaining two lectures for the uh, month of, of December. I'm taking off my glasses now and, uh, and, and so that I can read. And I see that Sister Melissa Rooks is uh, talking. Oh, and that's wonderful. I appreciate that. God bless you, Sister Melissa, that she's asking us to pray for her, her boss, uh, Dr. Johnson. And of course, uh, Melissa is a dentist here at this church, and we, we thank God for all the work that she does in the Harris County community. So um, we are instructed to pray for those who are above us in authority, and so this is always great to see someone following the scripture. Um, she's also praying, uh, oh, for her, her mother. Oh, God bless her. Sister Rooks is having a birthday today. Boy, if I could sing happy birthday, I, w I would do it. Oh, and it sees that she also had a fall. So, okay, God bless that as well. Anybody else, anybody have a prayer request that uh, we need to, to mention? Okay, also, we'll uh, certainly keep uh, the, the Whitaker family in my prayers and I ask that you do that as well. Okay, let, let us pray. Uh, Most Heavenly Father, we come on this blessed evening thanking you for all of the uh, blessings of this day. We ask that uh, you would uh, give us a, um, a, a moment of recollection, that you would give us a moment of concern for um, your word. We pray that we'll always carve some time out in our day to think about the scriptures, to read the scriptures, and to ask ourselves, are we following the scriptures? And are we doing it joyfully, or are we doing it in a begrudging fashion? Lord, to help us to always analyze ourselves to ensure that we are uh, walking circumspect with you. We ask that you would bless um, the boss of Sister Melissa Rooks, Dr. Johnson, we ask that uh, you would uh, bless uh, that uh, direct report as he or she is going to have a surgery on Friday. We pray that uh, all the persons that will be responsible for his or her care, that uh, they will do their absolute best work to ensure that... Uh, her direct report has a positive outcome. And we thank you that Sister Margaret Rooks had a birthday on today. We say happy birthday on to, unto her, and we pray that uh, um, she will have many, many more. And we ask that you would bless her as she is, uh, had, had a fall on today. And uh, we just ask that uh, you would uh, bless her, and we pray that it was not uh, very serious on today. She's always such a very dear uh, sister, so... We ask that you would please keep her in your prayers. We also ask that you'd keep uh, the Whitaker family in your prayers as they have to uh, deal with all of life's realities. And uh, we just pray that, um, that uh, little Fred uh, will be able to find uh, his, his way in society. And uh, we always uh, ask that you would keep uh, Carly in your care and Cinco in your care 
as uh, they certainly uh, need you at this time. We ask that you would uh, keep the uh, Shauna Melton family in your prayers, in your care as we pray for them. Lord, uh, everybody who is under the sound of my voice, that they would uh, find a blessing on today. That you would have a covenant of peace, love, and prosperity over everybody who is uh, listening today. We pray that we will have a very wet palate for the word of God. So as Randy comes, that he will be enthused. That uh, uh, he's bringing it uh, as best he can, realizing that you have been so very good to him and others. And so you always deserve our best effort every single time we get up. Every morning we get up, we ought to be enthused that thank God Almighty, I'm still alive. So we ask that you would bless him, bless his lovely wife, Sister Stacy, as she posts uh, scriptures in support of her husband on tonight. But we ask that you would just give him a powerful understanding and recollection of all that you have placed with him on tonight. We ask that you would bless him tonight and others. Bless all of us on tonight and others. Those that are viewing live tonight and others. We ask that you would bless us all tonight and others. In the magnificent name of Jesus Christ and everybody online typed in amen. Brother Randy Alfred. Again, I want to say thank you so much for allowing me to have this opportunity this evening. I want to thank everyone that is listening in and tuning in. To uh, I want to say thank you very much, and I hope that you uh, gain something out of what God has put on my heart to give you this evening. Um, I want to give you a little backdrop as to why I wanted to uh, teach on uh, uh, effective leadership and, the, and effective leadership traits because it's very important that we have effective leaders in our communities, in our churches, in our cities, and in our nation, and, and, and in the world for that matter. We have to have effective leadership. And, and uh, in choosing those effective leaders, you have to, uh, they have to have certain traits that uh, will allow them to uh, administer uh, to the group in a most productive way and uh, they, ha they can't be selfish they have to be selfless just as Christ was selfless in the things that he did in the way he uh, uh, is, is example of lead in, in his example of leadership uh, to, to the church and uh, I want to first uh, start talking about um, how I, I just want to talk to you for a minute uh, a few years ago, we had a, a 44th president. Uh, that 44th president, he put into place things that would um, come into play when the 45th president came into effect. And um, because of, I guess, politics or whatever, maybe some animosity, some hatred or whatever, uh, the 45th president, uh, disband some of the things that the 44th president did. And um, a few years ago, we, you know, when we first started uh, ha uh, having this uh, crisis with COVID, when the pandemic first hit, um, I, I believe that because of the um, ineffective leadership that we had at the time that uh, it cost countless of lives. The, the delayed response to uh, the urgency of the pandemic uh, of the situation caused countless of lives to be um, lost. Uh, I, I say that because just as soon as they got the vaccine, just as soon as everybody started being administered the, the vaccine, uh, their, the, the daily death counts went down dramatically. They went down dramatically. Because I could remember back, uh, the news was so depressing back then, uh, showing all the bodies and stuff that were being lost to COVID because we didn't know what it was and we didn't know how to, to deal with it. But um, like I said, the 44th president had a, a, a response in place 
But then when the 45th president came in, uh, he dismantled that team. And uh, it cost countless of lives. We talk about how uh, leaders are responsible for the, for a certain thing. I mean, for for the group, leaders will be responsible for the group. And I believe um, some of the actions of the 45th president um, caused us to have a um, uh, a council and a um, some hearings on some of the things that he did. But I don't think that the well, I think it was called the resurrection, the re uh, where they went in on to the capital, not the resurrection, but the uh, uh, insurrection. The insurrection came they, where they went into the capital building, and, and and so they had some things. They they was wanting to know was he responsible for that. But I don't think that's the most uh, damaging thing that he did. I think that the 45th president, his lack of response to COVID, uh, should be what. He should, uh, well, should, they should be looking at because he dismantled uh, a panel. I'm just talking about leadership and how leadership can go and, and how important le uh, effective leadership can be in, with, uh, to the group, to the church, to the community. And uh, because he dismantled the, uh, the CDC panel that the 44th president had put into place in case of a pandemic to come on, it cost cause it cost countless of lives to be lost. So that's what I'm, I'm getting to. That's why I wanted to speak upon uh, leadership and how effective leadership will, will, will help the group, will help the church, and, and, and the church will also have to, I'm going to start, I'm going to be talking about how the church has to also train up leaders. They have to, to, to train up leaders because uh, we progress and we live and we die. Someone else else would have to come and uh, be in in that position, just as Jesus did. You know, the the apostles were with Jesus, and the apostles were with Jesus, and they recognized all that they saw all the things that they that he done, he did. And so when Jesus died and 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 and, and was resurrected and and went to uh, to the Father, uh, those apostles had to start the church they had to be responsible those they were leaders that started to be responsible for the old i mean for the for the for the furtherance of the church and um the, even those apostles had to train up leaders because it had to it had to continue and continue so those leaders have to be able to train up other leaders in the proper way of of uh for the good of the of the group uh, Brother Brady, you had something? Somebody had to just uh, send me a text, and they wondering if you can amen this, that leaders are not only responsible, but God will hold them accountable. Accountable. And so, you know, you, you may be operating in this chasm of independence now, but sooner or later, God is going to look at what you did and he's going to hold you accountable and uh, you'll be rewarded for good leadership and you'll be punished for bad. In the here and in, in the and later. In, in, in both ways, it's twofold, yes sir. So um, that that is what got me to thinking about how uh, important uh, effective uh, leadership is and then uh, Christian leadership. Even now, uh, we still have to look at the forty, uh, the forty-sixth president. The forty-sixth president. I don't know if all of y'all know, but a few days ago, he signed into law the same-sex marriage um, decree or whatever they called it. And now, 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 same-sex marriages are the partner. The partner is, is able to get the benefits. I, I, I uh. Uh, from from his or her uh, husband or his or her you know wife and so you know it's you we have to be careful about who we um, elect as our leaders and the in the principles and the uh, the values and the um, integrity that those leaders have those traits that they have so uh, I know it's hard in this time and to to uh, get someone 
to lead that is 100%, because there was only one that was 100%. We talk about keeping it 100. There was only one that really, really kept it 100. And, and so, therefore, uh, we have to take the good with the bad, you know, So sometimes. But the bad can kill you. The bad can get you killed. Uh, and, and, and maybe not in the physical sense, but in the spiritual sense, which is the most important thing anyway. So we have to be uh, uh, careful and aware of who we allow to uh, direct us, direct us on the right path or the wrong path. Uh, the, you know, so uh, that's why I, I know that I have to pray and ask for God to keep a beacon, of, be a beacon of light to keep me going in the right direction because I don't, uh, just because the, the law says that it's okay, doesn't mean that it's right. And I know it's a scripture that says that, you know, what man thinketh to be right uh, will only lead him to, to his death. You know, you're, you're talking about a very sensitive subject because uh, for those of us that preach, this uh, law has come in affront to what we believe or what we teach. Okay, well, let me, let me fr fix it. Of what I believe and what I teach. Um, I am not in favor of same-sex marriages, irrespective to what the cost may be. And so I have to stick with what is right, irrespective to what comes down the pike. And so um, at some point, and I have con done my best to condition the congregation, that times will come when we as Christians won't be able to stay on the sidelines, that you're going to have to declare what you believe uh, about the gospel, what you believe about scripture, and of course, there's going to be a price. And so if Jesus paid the ultimate price, then rest assured that we as Christians will have to pay a price. We won't uh, just skip in. It's going to be costly, and heaven should be costly, as it's the most significant thing that a person can obtain. Who do you hold your allegiance to? It's Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, that's Christ. the question. Who do you hold your allegiance to? Um, and, and, and then govern yourself accordingly. You know, uh, if you hold your allegiance to man, then you can follow man's law. But if you hold your allegiance to Christ, then we have to follow Christ's laws. That, so that's just bottom line. It, that's just bottom line on that. So we know that a strong uh, spiritual leader is important a strong spiritual leader we need a strong spiritual leader we always do uh, we need uh, scripture soaked this dripping in scripture to be our leader you know with that's who we have to follow because uh, the the things that he will teach you are in that is based in on God's word and God's word has all the integrity that you need it will not allow you to go wrong so a strong spiritual leader. David, at the time, was he was a strong spiritual leader. Uh, the, David, the, the second king of Israel, was a striking contrast to Saul. See, Saul, there was like, that's just like what I was just saying about the 44th president, about the 44th president and the 45th president. It, that's, this is a good example of that. You know, uh, David, the second king of Israel, was a was in striking contrast to Saul, the first king. Whereas David was noble, he was generous and admirable. You know, uh, I'm not getting off the subject, but uh, I can remember a time when the, uh, the 44th president was uh, speaking, was speaking to the nation. He spoke so elegantly. Uh, I was able to just be beaming with pride and uh, be, even able to understand what he said, you know, what he was talking about. And, and I could feel the passion in his voice. I could feel his compassion for us. But then when the, the 45th president got in there, you know, and I, I, it, it, it was just all about confusion to me. To me, you know, I didn't feel the same type of uh, admiration. I didn't feel the same type of uh, generous uh, the person the, and being an admirable person uh, uh, what, I, what I did see was that was like was like probably what the people in the olden I mean in the Old Testament thought of Saul Saul was uh, 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 he lacked most of the fine qualities that uh, 
uh, that one expect in, a, in, in leadership. Uh, David came to the throne at about 1000 BC and reigned for approximately 40 years. He conducted many wars of conflict, uh, conquest. He laid the foundation for the uh, uh, Salamic Empire and initiated a period of splendor and power for the Israelites nations that was never that has never been equal okay and um, that has never been equal uh, behind David's accomplishments was the blessings of God the reason for his success was not difficult to find uh, when David was uh, approached by the elders of uh, Israel. Uh, I'm getting this from uh, 2 Samuel 5, 1 through 3. They recognized his many sterling qualities and strong traits of leadership. Some of the secrets of David's success was that there were several secrets to glory of David's leadership. First, wise diplomacy distinguished his reign. That comes from 2 Samuel 5 and 11. The king's generosity and attractive traits of personality won him many allies. He knew how to placate enemies as well as win friends. He was lovable. He made friends readily. While Saul had the strange ability to alienate people. These traits made David a successful diplomat as well. Now Jesus led by example. I want to point out a few of the, attrib the attributes and skills that Jesus demonstra demonstrated so perfectly. These skills and qualities are important for us all if we wish to succeed as leaders in any lasting way. See, Jesus had fixed principles. Jesus had the principles of his father. Jesus had the principles of the, the word. The, the word was with him. And he had that, those type of principles. So we, if you knew if you know scripture, and we know that uh, the leaders know scripture, you, we know when they fall off of it. When they, you can't lead us no, uh, uh, in any, uh, 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 in a wrong path. You can't lead us that because we know the word. That's why we studied to show ourselves to be approved. So we have to study that word. So uh, we know that Jesus had these fixed principles. He knew uh, who he was and why he was here on this planet. That meant he could lead from strength rather than from uncertainty or, or weaknesses. Jesus operated from a base of fixed principles or truths rather than making up rules as he went along. Thus, his leadership style was not only correct, but was also constant. See, that's important as well, that to be constant. I know, I, well, you know some. if I know you're a liar, I expect for you to lie. So, but if I know that you're truthful, I, I understand that the truth is going to come out your mouth every time I come, every time I talk to you. So I could believe what you say. I could believe. It. I could believe exactly what you say. So that's what I'm saying. So, so uh, uh, his style was not only correct, but it was also constant. So many secular leaders today are like chameleons. They change their they change their views to fit the situation which only tends to confuse the associates and, and followers who cannot be certain what course is being pursued. Those who cling to power at the expense of principle often end up doing almost everything to perpetrate their own power. Somebody yes, sir. just asked, you know, how do you, um, as a Christian text, how do you, how do you function as a Christian when you're around ungodly leaders at work hmm. and uh, follow on your principles you know, go on your principles I, what what it is that you know yeah and i think that's right but i want to i want to incur because i think all of us have had to deal with this at some at some level and so 
the thought has always been, and you know, I've been taught, you know, by you know my preachers as I was coming up that you know just because someone is doing wrong doesn't mean you have to do it. But when you're a grown person and you pay bills and have all of that stuff, that uh, uh, to support someone who is an authority of you and pray for them is right. That's why you need to pray for your leaders at work, whether you're at the post office or in uh, Enterprise, rent a car, wherever you are, because you want to make sure that people uh, are godly and they follow uh, God. But if they are not, um, as, as long as you are asking me to do my job, I'm going to do my job to the best of my ability. But when you get to a point that you're starting to ask me to do things that are ungodly or unethical, I'm off the board. You can do what you want to do with me at that point. But I'm not going to – I had a friend of years ago in a leadership position. He, he told this boss who had just become CEO of a company, he told him, I'll do anything you tell me to do, but I won't go to jail for you. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, you know, if you need me to open up a new clinic, if you need me to go talk to somebody in the, in the organization, I'll do it. But I won't go to jail for you. You know, Brother Bailey, it's funny that you mentioned, you know, being on the job. And so I'm going to give you an example of, of, uh, of how you have to follow uh, 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 principles, or uh, your principles, your integrity and stuff. Uh, um, even if everyone is taking an extra 15 to 20 minutes on their lunch break, that's still in time. That's still in time. And you know better than that. And you know better than that. And, and if you get caught up in that, you're wrong. And, and just because everybody else is doing it doesn't mean that it's, it's right. Yes. So um, getting back to this. Uh, Jesus said several times when he was uh, um, leading his people, he said, come follow me. He w his, his was a program of do what I do rather than do what I say. His inner, innate brilliance would have permitted him to put on a dazzling display. He could have did, he could have brought the legions down to get him off that cross. He could have brought the legion down to get him off that cross. But that would have left his followers far behind because they couldn't do that. So he had to lead as, for as an example. He walked and worked with those he was to serve. And see, Jesus come not to, not to be served, but to serve. And that's how an effective, that's, one, that's, a, that's a great leadership trait for a leader to have, is to serve. Um, he was not a long distance uh, leadership. His was not a long distance leadership. He was not afraid of close friendships. He was not afraid that proximity to him would disappoint his followers. See, I might step on some toes, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, you can't go to shake hands with Joel Osteen. You can't go shake hands with T.D. Jake. He got bodyguards. And I, I, I don't understand it. But I guess that's the way they roll. That's the way they roll. But see, they, they, they weren't, they're not approachable, but, but Christ was approachable. Look at the lady at the well. Um, the, the leaven of true leadership cannot lift others unless we are with and serve those to be led. Jesus kept himself uh, virtuous, and thus when his closeness to the people permitted him to just touch the hem of his garment, virtue could flow from him. That's Mark 5, 24 through 34. Jesus was a listening leader because he loved others with the perfect love. He listened without being condescending. A great leader listens not only to others, but also to his conscience and to the proximity and to the prompting of God. Jesus was a patient, pleading, loving leader. When Peter drew his sword and smote the high priest servants, cutting off his ear, Jesus said, put up thy sword in, into thy seat. That's John. 18 and 11. Without being angry, though, 
are perturbed. Jesus quietly helped the servants heal the servant's ear. But his, but his reproof of Peter was kind, but yet firm. Because Jesus loved his followers, he was able to uh, level with them, to be candid and forthright with them. He reproved Peter at times because he loved Peter. And Peter, being a great man, was able to grow from his reproof. There's a wonderful verse in the Bible, the book of Proverbs, all of us need to remember. Is that. It has to do with being uh, reproofed, being, 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 being corrected. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. He that refuseth instruction despises his own soul. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. Proverbs 15, 31 through 32. It is a wise leader or a wise follower who can cope with the reproof of life. Peter could do this because he knew Jesus loved him. And thus Jesus was able to groom Peter for a very high place of responsibility in the kingdom. See, Jesus knew that he had to get Peter and all of his, his apostles ready because he knew where he was going. But the gospel had to be continued. The gospel had to be spread. So there had to be someone there that knew the truth. And the truth, he said that if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Um, Jesus saw sin as wrong, but also was able to see sin springing from deep and uh, an unmet need on the part of the sinner. This permitted him to condemn the sin without condemning the individual. That, now that's love. We can show forth our love for others even when we are called upon to correct them. We need to be able to look deeply enough into the lives of others to see the basic causes for their failures and their shortcomings. See, we had a conversation the other day, me and Brother Bailey, and, and uh, we were talking about, I was, he asked me what, uh, what, uh, what, could I, what could he pray for me for? And I told him to pray for me because I do the things that I know I shouldn't do. And, and, and that's just like Peter, right? I mean, like what Paul said, Paul said that he do the things that the things that he know that he shouldn't do, he does. The things that he knows he should do, he don't do. And, it, and then what he say that it was because of the sin that's in him. And so I understand that and I hope you understand that as well, you know, and uh, and when we and, and correction and being and having a strong leader that will be able to come and correct you. In a loving fashion, would only uh, lead to your growth. So, a selfless leader, a selfless leader, selfless leadership. Uh, the Savior's leadership was selfless. He put himself and his own needs second, and ministered to others beyond the call of duty, tirelessly, lovingly, and effectively. So many of the problems in the world today spring from selfishness and self-centeredness in which too many make harsh which which too many make harsh demands of life and others in order to meet their own demands. This is a direct reversal of the principles and practices pursued so perfectly by the perfect example of leadership, Jesus Christ. Jesus' leadership emphasized the importance of living uh, discern, discerning with regards to others without seeking to control them. He cares about the freedom of his followers to choose. Even he, in those moments that mattered so much, had to choose voluntarily to go through 
Jessamine and to hang on the Calvary cross. He taught us that there can be no growth without real freedom. One of the problems with the with manip manipulative uh, leadership is that it does not spring from a, the love of others, but from a need to use them. Such leaders focus on their own needs and desires and not on the needs of others. Now tonight, re uh, a there's some uh, responsibility. The, the leaders have certain responsibilities. Jesus knew how to involve his disciples in the process of life. He gave them important and specific things to do for their development. Other leaders have sought to be so effective that they had tried to do everything themselves, which produces little growth in the others. Jesus trusts his followers enough to choose to share his work with them so they so that they can grow. He was teaching as he led. That is one of the greatest lessons of his leadership. If we brush other if we brush other people aside in order to see a task done more quickly and effectively, the task may get done all right but without the growth and development in the followers. That, and that is so important. Because Jesus knew that his life, in, 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 that, his, that this life is purposeful and that we have been placed on this planet in order to perform and grow. Growth then comes, becomes one of the great ends of life as well as a means. We can give corrective feedback to others in a loving and helpful way when mistakes are made. Any study of Christian leadership is in, incomplete unless the life of Jesus is studied. It is essential to recognize at the outset that he emphasized the concept of leadership by his own statement. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. I am among you as one who serves, Mark 10 and 45 and Luke 22 and 27. If Christ spent so much time with the disciples, it is certain that he wished to impress them with the example of his life. He came to serve, and so should they. And so should we. This was his method of leadership. He unselfishly gave his life. Um, which culminated in the death on the cross. The Old Testament predicted the Messiah would be a suffering servant. His service did not uh, degenerate into servanty. He was humble, but retained dignity. His kind of service set an example. He was willing to wash the disciples' feet. His, his perfect, sinless human life ended in self-sacrifice at Calvary. Thus, he showed his followers how to serve, and he demanded no less of those who carry on his work on earth. Jesus teaches all leaders for all time that greatness is not found in rank or position, but in service. He made it clear that the true leadership is grounded in love, which must issue in service. When we take a closer look at his earthly service, we discover that his ministry was mainly teaching. He spoke with authority. At times, the greatest learned men of the synagogues were startled by his teaching. He knew that the only way to perpetrate truth was to pass it on, so he set out to train his disciples. Furthermore, his leadership demanded that others be obedient. 
He did not want his disciples to use their position for selfish, for selfish purposes. So his leadership was largely carried out through teaching and training as well as through keen interest in individuals and their problems. After major uh, consideration, it is that Christ's service, service was redemptive. He came to provide freedom for man. The truth that set you free. That's John 8 and 32. This idea must dominate the relationship between any true leader and the group. There must be in a dynamic living relationship that is what that is what is meant to be redemptive. Men who had faith in Christ not only found eternal life, but were changed in the here and now. The Christian leader following the pattern of Christ would not use the ways to achieve his own ends without regard for the people who constitute the group. He will want to follow people to be, he, he will want to allow people to be, this is the leader, he will want people to, want to allow people to be themselves and thus be liberated. It is not a, a, a slavish conformity to the group that he seeks, but to help people serve a cause, uh, uh, to serve a cause with joy commitment and a motivation that is prompted by Christ himself. The calling of men by gods is a major theme in the Bible. He is a living God who addresses his word to men, to man. He does not speak to all men, but often calls men by name to service. The apostle Paul recognized his own gifts by insisting that, the, that, that he would not glory beyond measure. 2 Corinthians 10 and 13. Um, on the other hand, the gifts that he received made him a debtor to discharge them. 1 Corinthians 9, 16 through 17. It's clear that one of the gifts God uh, gives to men is a special ability to uh, administer or manage in the listings of gifts and uh, in the listings of gifts of the spirit in Romans 12 Paul mentioned gifts of teaching exhorting but also the gift of diligence to quality the man who governs the leader um, I think we're running pretty close to time well uh, it must be because my phone went dead. <laughs> so um, next week we're going to get into a lot. Um, I want to talk about some some um, leaders uh, in the black community for one thing next week. I want to talk about uh, how the leaders in the family and how leaders in the family can can change everything, can change everything. Um, and it's so uh, I'm going to give some prime examples, <laughs> excuse the pun, prime, because I'm going to be talking about prime time uh, a little bit next week. And we all know who he is. He's been in the news pretty much um, for the last two or three weeks. And uh, but I want to get into how he has led and, and what he is doing. So, Brother Bailey, you have something? do just a prayer request if you would um don't know if you you need a pen to be able to write or you got it in memory who uh if you could pray for the following if you could pray for uh, sister uh, sister toya uh also please keep um brother abel mosley in your prayers he's asked for prayers for he and his family sister billy covington uh number three and then um, Sister Shauna Melton, number four. Who was the fourth one? Shauna Melton. Oh, okay. Okay, so if you could keep those uh, in prayer. 
uh, I know they would be uh, profoundly grateful. And uh, again, uh, okay. uh, pray for Sister Rooks as well. Wilson? Rooks. Rooks, okay. All right, there has been a few prayer requests. Um, Sister Billy Covington, Brother Abel Mosley, uh, Sister Rooks, uh, Sister Shauna Melton, and, and Toya. Okay. Well, they're, they're asking for prayers this, this evening. And so uh, I would encourage each and every one of us that are listening tonight to put some type of prayer request because we all stand in need of prayer. We all stand in need of prayer. I want to add myself to that list. Um, so let us go to our Father in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come humbled this evening. We come knowing that you are the Alpha and the Omega. We, know, we come knowing that uh, this universe it was made by you, Father God. Everything in it was made by you. We know that you are the great I Am, Father. We know where to go to when we are in trouble. And, and tonight, Father God, we are in troubled people. We need your help more than ever, Father God. We need you to be able to put your healing hands on us this morning, this evening, Father. A lot of us are sick. A lot of us aren't feeling very well, Father. A lot of us are going through a lot of issues of life. Life can tend to beat us down, but, but Father, no, we know that you are the one that can lift us up. Get us up off of this, uh, whatever it is that's, uh, that's bothering us. Get whatever it is that's ailing us up off of us. We know that you are the one that's able to do that. We, the doctors know they could um, diagnose us, but you could heal us. You could heal us more than any medicine that came across the line, Father God, any vaccine that came across the line, Father God. You, your healing powers are, uh, will make those things obsolete, make it only like an aspirin to us because yours is so strong. Your, your love for us will allow you to uh, love us, want to see us doing good, want to see us feeling good. When we're not feeling good, we aren't smiling. We, we're, we're, we're not in a good mood. But, Father God, we want to always be in a good mood when we come to your house. We want to always be in a good mood, Father God, when we speak your name, when we call out your name, Father God. I know that it's not like that all the time, but, Father, but tonight, Father God, there are some that are calling to you and want to be healed. You know, and, 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 and you, you, if they could, if I could hear their voices tonight, I know that you can, Father God. You could feel the urgency in it. So, Father God, those that are standing in, in need of your, your love and your healing powers tonight, Father God, I ask in the Son Jesus' name that you will heal them for whatever ails them. Thank you so much, Father. For all that have tuned in tonight to listen to your word, Father God, thank you so much for allowing that. So, Father, we want to pray in Jesus' name uh, that we all make it home safely, that we all will be able to come back on another day to hear another portion of your word, Father. We pray all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And thank you all. And, be, and we, will, we will be, the, the church offices will be closed next week, but we will be here Wednesday. So uh, we look forward to seeing you tuning in next Wednesday. And until then, God bless. And